Hey everybody, welcome to our devotional for the day. We've been uh, looking at Genesis chapter 3, the last couple of devotional thoughts that we've had, and we're going to conclude uh, this week by another peek into this story that we find in Genesis chapter 3. So, like we always say, if you've got your Bible, or if you're close to one, pick it up, turn to Genesis chapter 3, okay? And when you're there, I'd like you to get your eyes set on verse 8. And uh, today, just a few minutes together, but we're going to make a point that I, I know you're going to be able to relate to. Now, I, I got to warn you, it, it's going to sting a little bit. I know it does me, but, um, but I think it's something that we can learn from. And we see it where it originates here in this story in Genesis chapter 3. Okay, so your Bible's open, beginning at verse 8. Um, Adam and Eve have eaten from the tree that God said, leave that alone. You have run of the place, just don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, they end up doing that. They sin, they rebel against God. We've talked about that in the last couple of devotionals that we've had. Now, you look at verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9, but the Lord God called to the man, where are you? And here's Adam's answer. I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Now, look at verse 11. He said, and this is God speaking to Adam. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? I, I want to stop there. God knew. But God wanted man to acknowledge what he had done. And by the way, let me just say, that's what God wants from me and you. He knows he wants us to acknowledge what we've done. Now, here's where I wanted to go today. Look at verse 12. So God asked Adam, did you disobey me? And here's Adam's reply. The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So God asked him, you look at verse 11, did you eat from that tree? And Adam answers, but his answer is, well, the woman you gave me, well, she was the one that kind of led me down this path and yes, I ate from the tree. Well, it doesn't end there. So look at verse 13. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And look at what is the response of the woman. The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So, you know what I see there? Uh, first of all, I see myself, but more specifically, what I see is this ability that we have, I know I have, to blame other people for the wrong that I do. To blame other people for the bad decisions that I make. Can you relate to that? You can, because you're human. From the very beginning, we, we've been in this culture of the blame game. Now, uh, to be honest with you, I think we're on steroids as far as the blame game is concerned in our world today, in our culture today. Nobody wants to take responsibility. I mean, when was the last time you heard somebody look in the camera, as it were, and just say, 
I did it. I was wrong. It's not his fault. It's not her fault. It's not their fault. It's my fault. I was wrong. But instead, you know, what we see is, well, these were the circumstances. Well, if this person hadn't done that, and on and on it goes. We are professionals. We are so good at shifting the blame to someone else. Now, I want to say it again. That is something I wrestle with. I mean, there's something about being human. We see it in Adam and Eve. There's something about owning what we've done. And I've learned that what God is after in our lives, you know, the big story of the Bible, a part of it is for us to trust God Part of it is for us to be restored to health. But God knows that the path to being restored to health really begins with us owning who we are and what we've done. I want to show you a quick example of this. Um, it's all over scripture, but you still have your Bible? turn to Psalm 51. And this was written by one of the great characters in Scripture. I mean, this guy is, I mean, he is a wonderful human being in so many ways. As a matter of fact, Scripture describes him as a man after God's own heart. But, like the rest of us, like me, like you, He's fallen, and there's some pretty dark periods in his life. Like you and me, he's done some pretty dark things. And he's coming out of one of those dark periods in his life when he writes Psalm 51. And I just, I just want to read one verse out of the psalm. I would encourage you, take five minutes, read the whole psalm. And if you want a little context... Go to 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12. Okay? Now, look at verse 4. This is what God is after in our lives. Now, you remember Adam and Eve. Well, the woman that you gave me, she led me down this path, and yes, I ended up disobeying. And the woman, well, the serpent, the serpent whispered in my ear, and, and the serpent is the reason why Yes, I disobeyed. But now listen to David. He's really crashed and burned in his life. He's been disobedient to God. But listen to what he says. He's talking to God and he says, against you, you had verse four, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So he says, you, God, are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Now, nobody said it was easy, but how refreshing is that? David just stands before his God and says, I did it. I was wrong. I rebelled against you, and I'm sorry. And you are right. You are right because I am wrong. Now, you're not going to hear that a lot today, but I want to tell you, here's the paradox. It is in that very moment when we stop blaming other people for the junk in our lives, whatever it may be, and we take personal ownership, it's at that very moment that God 
begins to heal our lives. And that's a great lesson out of Genesis 3. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again soon.